Hi, everyone. Welcome to Kiki and Kibbits. It's Mary, and I'm here with this week's edition of 90 Days in 900 Seconds Before the 90 Days, Season 6, Episode 12, Field of Dreams. You know, there has been a lot of movie-themed episode titles. It was St. Elmo's Fire last week. This week, it's Field of Dreams. Let's see how many of you guys know what I'm referring to. Anyway, if I was going to give this episode a grade, I would give it a solid B+. Plus. Lots and lots of drama. So let's set 900 seconds on the timer so I could dive right into this shit. Because there's a lot of shit I want to dive right into. So let's go. Okay, I'm going to start backwards. So I'm starting off with Cleo and Christian. So they're trying to get back on track. After that awkward confrontation last week, where Cleo basically confronted Christian about lying, having sex with her to the producers, and he turned it around and made her feel guilty for confronting him about lying, because after all, he was just trying to protect her, you know. Mm -hmm. So... They're trying to get their relationship back on track. And as you guys may or may not remember, because the season feels like it has gone on forever. In the first episode, when we were introduced to Cleo, she is really big into astrology. She broke the fourth wall to ask the crew what their signs were. Okay. Because she needed to know what their signs were because that's how she gets a feel of people. She is really, really big into astrology. So guess what? She set up an astrology reading for her and Christian. And Christian is not so happy about this. He's like, hmm, okay. So, you know, because Christian's like, I was born on the same day as Donald Trump. Does that mean I'm like Donald Trump in any way as he does his best Donald Trump and Donald Trump impersonation? But um, hey, he he was not feeling this, and Cleo was totally into this. So they meet up with her friend, and um, they are connected on a subconscious level, that's for sure. But Christian lacks sensitivity and um, empathy, while Cleo, as a water sign, is very very sensitive. So this is clashing not good okay so when you have a sign like christian and a sign like cleo's they seem to um see each other as uh the enemy as opposed to being lovers in this type of relationship so it'll be very toxic so basically her astrologer is telling her to run in the other direction, okay? And um, Christian, you know, he's like, this This feels spooky because all of this is like really on point. And Cleo has a moment. Cleo has a moment during her confessional where she's like, um, she's crying because she misses the way things were on social media. When she first saw Christian's picture, and they were just chatting and texting back and forth. Those were just simpler days, you know. And now that he's here, everything is so weird, awkward. And she doesn't know if she will be able to handle the heartbreak. And to be honest, I did not see one tear fall from her eye. But hey, that's just me. I could have missed it. But... She can't deal with it if things don't work out. But Cleo, it's in the stars, honey. Even the stars are screaming. This relationship is not going to work out. So let's move on to another relationship that is not going to work out. Stadler and Dempsey. Now, where we left off with them last week, Stadler had planned this romantic Valentine's Day for Dempsey, okay? The scavenger hunt. 
And when Dempsey arrived at the end of the scavenger hunt, um, Stadler dropped the following bombs on her. I love you. Do you love me? Yes, I love you, Stadler. I love you. Okay, I want to move in with you. My lease expires a month after I get home. So um, let's move in together. And oh, by the way, my ex-girlfriend, um, when she knew that I was coming here to see you, she wanted to pick me up at the airport and stay with me in a hotel for a night, but I told her no. But I never told you this. But um, I know that I confronted you. She didn't say this. But I know I confronted you about you cheating on me in Thailand, even though you told me that the Wi-Fi connection was going to be kind of crappy and you wouldn't be able to talk to me nine hours a day like we used to. So um, we didn't have any communication in Thailand. And I aut automatically jumped to the conclusion that you were cheating on me, even though you never cheated in a relationship. And I have a history of cheating in relationships. But anyway, Dempsey, I love you so much. And um, I want to live with you. So can I live here, please? Please, 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 because I was abandoned. I'm adopted. Did I mention I was adopted? I'm adopted and my birth parents abandoned me and I have all of these issues. So Dempsey, please, please let me move in with you. And Dempsey is like, what in the living fuck? Give me a minute to absorb all of this. So when we pick up on this episode, Stadler is sleeping on the couch. Okay, Dempsey goes off to work because she's like, see you later. I'm going to leave you here on the couch. I'm going to go to work. I got to get away from you. I'm trying to absorb all this shit that you just dumped on my lap last night on Valentine's Day. Thank you very much. You made it a very memorable Valentine's Day. So Dempsey calls her friend. I'm sorry, Stadler calls her friend. Like, friend. And um, <sighs> even her friend is like, you fucked this up. Her friend is like, you fucked this up, but Stadler doesn't want to hear it. Stadler just wants someone to love so badly that she will force Dempsey on her. I'm sorry. That's the way that I feel. She wants someone to love her so badly that she's just going to force it. Okay. So Dempsey, she's trying to be the smart one here. And she's like, relationships are a gradual thing, Stadler. We need to slow down and learn everything about each other. And Stadler's like, but we have. It's been seven whole months. Like, what do you mean? You don't know me? It's been seven whole months. And Dempsey's like, yeah, I think I just need to take a step back. And then this is one. And I said what I said, Stadler pulled the adoption card and that's bullshit, okay? I get it. Your biological parents put you up for adoption and you feel a certain way about it. Stop projecting it into your relationships and get therapy. Just saying, okay? Because that was total bullshit. She pulled the adoption card on Dempsey and Dempsey immediately felt guilty. And next thing you know, everything is hunky-dory and Stadler's allowed back in the bed. And I said what I said. So Stadler's all about, I just believe that in relationship, you should leave with your heart and not your brain. Okay. Said every chick on love after lockup and love during lockup that that dated a freaking inmate, okay? Relationships should be left with your heart and not your brain. Just saying. Anyway, moving on to Misha and Nicola. Misha. Paging Misha, damn it. Misha, why the hell were you fishing in a dress? What the fuck? What was going on there okay so Nicola decided to take Misha fishing because you know he's been talking to her about fishing for seven years so now he wants to show her where he fishes and this I found this scene hysterical first of all she's in a dress water shoes and a dress 
and she's trying to fish and she's like oh this is so easy like you make it sound so hard and Nicola's like Misha Misha do you have any bait on your line pull it up no the worm's gone you see Misha you have to pay attention this is a science Misha he didn't say this is science but you get where I'm going okay so Misha being the independent American woman that she is decides not to listen to him and go out a little bit further in the water and she slips on some rocks and he's like Misha you're bleeding Misha oh my goodness Misha acted like you know her, her leg was hanging off or something you know she she had a couple of cuts she was bleeding but nothing crazy they get on the beach and they start talking about Misha going to meet his mom and his brothers and Nicola is nervous as shit okay guys Nicola's nervous as shit because she he hasn't told his very traditional mom about this American divorcee woman that he is bringing home to her and um what is the true depth of their relationship okay so he is shitting in his pants and he is telling me Sha, I'm just basically afraid that my mother's going to say some very harsh words so they arrive at the mom's house and the mom is so sweet she gives the mom flowers chocolates her favorite chocolates from america misha is trying to communicate with the mom and nicola the translator keeps running out of the room so it's like uh dude you're not helping here okay the brothers arrive and everyone's like oh hi and you know so they sit around there's lots of really, really good looking food. The mom was making something with um vine grape leaves stuffed with meat and spices. And there was chicken and all the stuff on the table. Looked really, really good. Okay. So he's worried about what his family is going to think. And he's hemming and hawing about telling them who she really is. Misha sitting there like Nicola. Are you going to tell, you know, your family who I am? And he's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like practically massaging the shit out of his face, like trying to massage the words out of his mouth, basically. So his brother's like, so Nicola, how do you know Misha? And we shall see how he answers that question next week. So now moving on to the part that made me cry, David and Sheila, David, Sheila, John Real, Sheila's son, and Abe, the translator, are all going to the beach. Now, if you guys have been watching and listening to me for a long time, you guys know that Adam, the translator, from the other way a couple of seasons back is my favorite translator of all times. I mean, he dealt with the Brittany Yazan situation with grace, patience, and fantastic translating skills, to say the least. So, Amy, I think she might be taking over Adam's spot. I hate to say it, Adam, you know, I have all love for you and the kitties, but AB is doing an outstanding job. Outstanding job. So they're in the car and Sheila is kind of worried because she wants David and John Real to bond. Okay. And, you know, they talk a little bit and David's like, you know, I really don't know what to ask him. What's his favorite sports, basketball and volleyball. You know, so they're kind of sitting in like awkward silence in the car. And then David remembers an old trick. Kids just like to be kids. So he grabs John Real's hand and I knew what he was going to do. And they start playing like hand tag, like, you know, slap, 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 slap. Okay, hitting Sheila with the process. Sheila's like, hey. Okay, so they're all like laughing in the back seat. Okay, then it's like one, two, three, done more. John Real and David are literally playing dumb war. 
okay? John Reel's like, oh, his hands are so big. Everybody's laughing. It is a bonding moment. And David's like, listen, I just reverted back to my childhood and communicating with my father. And all kids do. They like to play. Playing is a universal language. They get to the beach and they're in the water. And David walks up to John Reel and starts splashing him. Hey. Kids understand splash war. He starts splashing David back and it's on. That's a bonding moment. Sheila's standing there watching all this. Her heart is overflowing with love and joy. Watching her son and her man bond. They're throwing rocks in the water, splashing each other. Amy takes the family picture. Amy two thumbs up. I would give you four thumbs up if I could for your translating skills and just your compassion and your empathy and the way that you just throw yourself into your job, girl. Oh, Amy, if you hear me, send me a DM. I would love to interview you. Just saying, paging Amy the translator, send me a DM. Or I'm going to find your social media. I'm going to track you down, girl. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make that my mission. I'm going to track Amy the translator down. Anyway, so they are, they are sitting down for a meal, okay? And Sheila asks her son if he would like to move to the United States. And the kid said no. <laughs> I mean, do you blame him? He probably saw all the shit, you know, in... in Probably hears about a little shit in the U.S. And he's like, hell no, I don't want to move there. So Sheila's like, I understand, you know, he might be afraid. But, you know, I'm hoping that he'll change his mind. David is like, I understand where he's coming from. Because he felt that way when he went away to the deaf school. That he was going to miss his family and his friends and all that. So he totally gets where the kid is coming from. So David says he will do anything at his utmost power to provide for Sheila and her son once they arrive here, okay? They will be his responsibility and he will do everything in his utmost power to provide for them. And this is a man with a severe disability. My mom was a deaf mute and my mom did not work, okay? So he could technically be sitting at home collecting a disability check, but this man is working two jobs. So David, now we're getting into the shit. This is why I wanted to leave these last two for last. Gino and Jasmine, they're back from Panama. They're, they're back from their little Panam Panamanian getaway, okay, where we hear about Gino ejaculating. You could not do a drinking game based on how many times Jasmine said ejaculate because you would die of alcohol poisoning, okay? So they're trimming each other's nose hairs as a couple, okay? And we keep hearing about Gino's sexual issues and we are on episode 12. And I have been saying this since episode one, that they will stretch out Gino's sexual issues to at least episode eight or nine and we are on 12 and we are still talking about the fact that Gino just ejaculated last week so anyway now that Gino's ejaculating he wants to get Jasmine pregnant and Jasmine's like hell's in the motherfucking no I'm not having your kid are you out of your mind and Gino's like wait a second I thought we were on the same page. I thought I was going to poke you with Gino Jr. to give you a Gino Jr. And Jasmine's like, hells to the motherfucking no. I am not having another kid. I already have two. No. Get that out of your head. And meanwhile, Jasmine this week is sporting like this 1960s hippie flower child look with like barrettes in her hair. I don't know what the fuck she was doing. Okay. And she's like, no. Gino, first of all, you just started ejaculating last night. 
Second of all, I am not having another baby. I'm going to be in the United States all alone with nobody to help me. I'm here in Panama. I have two children who do not live with me. I have full family support. And I still, it is hard for me to be a mother of my two sons that do not live with me. And my family, I have a full family support here. Imagine, you know, if I'm in the U.S. by myself and I'm stuck with a kid, are you out of your fucking mind? No way. Get that, get that thought out of your head immediately. Right now, right now, right now, right now. And Gino's just like, but, but, but. Huh. Yes, yeah, so um, that's basically Gino and Jasmine this week. Gino wants a baby and Jasmine tells him the hell's in a motherfucking no. Change your mind right now. Change your mind right now. I don't care. I don't care that you wanted a kid this whole time. Change your mind right now. Now, for the final segment, Riley and Violet. Oy, oh, boy. Okay, so when we last seen these two, they were blocking each other and they were done. Riley, uh, Riley was ready to go to fuck home. But then he, he met up with Tommy the tour guide Went around on the back of his motorcycle. Then they went for a cigar and some whiskey. And Tommy told them that he fucked up. That in Vietnam, that family is blood family, not friends. So that was the utmost offense to Violet to have Tiffany question her. So according to Tommy, the tour guide, you need to go and apologize. So Riley decides, you know something? Maybe he's right. And he unblocked and sent the message. And Violet decided, you know something? Let me go meet him and let me see if his apology is sincere. So Riley is like, if they could both just acknowledge their roles in the argument, then maybe they could get past this. And that I agree with. So Riley shows up at a coffee shop with this big bouquet of flowers that has no violets in it. Just saying. I mean, I would I would have been cheesy if I was him and made sure there was a couple of violets in the bouquet, but it's okay. So, Violet said that Riley sent the message because he knows that it's his fault and this is his last chance. Really. So, she accepts the flowers, but will not forget about how Riley threw her, her ass under the bus with Tiffany when Tiffany was questioning her. It wasn't the question that bothered her so much. It was the way that the question was asked. She was like a cop. She was interrogating her, and that's not right. Violet did not like that at all, and what bothered Violet the most was that Riley just sat there and let Tiffany do it and pressured her, answer her question, answer her question, answer her question. And Violet can't take it. Violet can't take it. No, that's not right. You are supposed to protect me and not throw me under the bus. Okay? So Riley acknowledges that he was wrong. Okay? He apologizes. And Violet says that his apology is not sincere. I smell a little bit of editing here because how can he tell, how can she tell that he wasn't sincere? I mean, to me, what I watched, I don't know, Violet, like, what are you implying? He's not sincere. He's sitting there apologizing. So Riley says, is everything my fault? And Violet's like, yes, everything is your fault. Everything is your fault. Just accept it. That's it. So Riley's like, listen, how can we solve this? And Violet's like, I don't understand your question sometimes. English is not my mother language. 
So now she's pulling the language barrier card. See, Stadler pulled the um, adoption card. She's pulling the language barrier card. So why don't you write out the questions, translate them for me, and I'll answer them for you. And Riley's like, that's fantastic. Fantastic, not a problem. I could do that all day long. I understand. I apologize. Not a problem. Okay. So now you're going to a Buddhist temple. And Riley is putting on the traditional garb that he was being fitted for in the tailor shop. Remember in the first couple of episodes where Riley called him old and ugly to her friend, the tailor? He had that outfit. Okay. So he puts it on, and in his words, he looks fantastic. Violet wants to go to the temple to get her peace back because her peace is really disturbed. She's not a Buddhist, but she admire, admires Buddhism, and she goes to temple every chance she gets to recenter herself. So she's taking Riley with her so the two of them could recenter themselves, which I think is a really good idea. So. Riley feels at peace. It is a nice day at the temple. And um, they do this whole thing where they, you know, buy, um, buy a ribbon, have their names put up on the wall. It's such a nice bonding day. Then the next scene, they're flying kites. And it's like, oh, this is cool. But Violet mentions in her little confessional that Riley is leaving in three days and there is an issue that she hasn't brought up yet. Dun, dun, dun. So now they're flying kites. They're bonding, having a moment, making memories. And Riley's like, I could do this all day long. And he's, you know, doing this kite flying thing. And Violet takes the opportunity to ask him about his finances. Do you have enough money to take care of me and my daughters? How much money's in your account? Oh, I'm just asking. And Riley's like, oh. all right, let's just put it this way. I have 100K saved. I know you don't know what that means in American money, but I make broke look good, okay? I could take care of you and your daughters. I make broke look good. And she's just kind of looking at him like, hmm, okay. Now, he has answered every single one of her questions, dealt with the interrogation of her mom, which he should, dealt with the questions of her daughters, which he should. He answered everybody's question. But Violet, why do you get so damn offended if Riley asks you anything? Who cares if it's referring to something in the past, the present, or the future? You guys are supposed to be partners. He should be able to ask you anything. My husband could ask me whatever the fuck he wants, okay? So I don't see what is the big deal of Riley asking Violet to clarify why and whether she feels regret about all of the texts that she sent to his dad, dragging his elderly, not well father into unnecessary drama. And she says she has no regrets. And I said, whoa, you are a cold hearted bitch. And I said what I said, because for someone to sit there and say, you know something, yes, I acknowledge we were fighting. Yes, I acknowledge I wanted to hurt you. Yes, I acknowledge that I sent a, a 10,000 text messages, I'm exaggerating, to your elderly, not well father, who was very sick at the time, a bunch of unnecessary bullshit about his son that he did not need to know and he could have been kept out of. But no, I have no regrets. Because in my mind, you were wrong and you deserved all that shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's a piece of work. She really is. She's a piece of work. And she says that he is King Kill Feelings. No, she is Queen Bitch 
kill feelings. Okay? And I said what I said. How dare she? Like Riley is trying to express to her how he she hurt him and more importantly, his father and asking her whether she has any regrets. And she just looked at him dead in the face and said, no. Now, if Riley did that to her mother, would she like that? No. Just saying. My goodness. Violet, are you a cold-hearted bitch or what? And why can't he ask you any questions? Jeez. Just saying. Gosh. So, that is all for now. We're going to see what happens next week with these train wrecks. But coming to an end very, very soon. It'll be tell-all time soon. And we know the tell-all. Hot Mess Express. You know, so we shall see. Thank you for watching, guys. Please subscribe if you don't already. If you guys are watching 90 Day Last Resort, I had an interview, recap and update with Kelly Brown. So please check it out if you haven't already. And please like this video and share it with a friend or 10. Thank you so much, guys. See you next time. Bye.